Hi, and thanks for signing up to attend the upcoming Magnus seminar entitled The Flipped Classroom, Rethinking the Way You Teach. Tim and I wanted to stay true to the pedagogical philosophy that we're espousing in this particular seminar. So what we're doing is giving you a mini lecture prior to the actual seminar. One of the things we'd also like you to do is to watch just a three-minute YouTube video called Flipping the Classroom Simply Speaking. Um, by the way, the video was created by folks at Penn State, so um, this is Ike in case you haven't figured out, and I'm kind of proud of my colleagues who made the video. So what you're watching right now is a screen capture. The, the program I'm using is called Camtasia. Uh, there's a free version of this called Jing, and there are other types of software for this. Um, what I'm doing is capturing much of what I want to say so that I don't have to say it in the seminar, in the classroom. Um, and it's an example for you guys to see how you could use a screen capture like this. A flipped classroom really does what we're doing right now. We're moving the lecture that typically occurs during class and we're moving it before class. So we're flipping. I can tell you that um, recently in the Chronicle of Higher Education, uh, Nigel Thrift, who's Vice Chancellor at the University of Warwick, was writing about the future of higher education. And I have this quote. This is what Thrift said. Quote, the early years of an undergraduate degree will gradually cease to be via lectures and will instead take the form of online presentations produced by professionally trained presenters backed up by teams of academics. I'm not sure I completely agree with that. I think the teachers themselves are going to become the trained professionals. Um, we're going to need, teachers are going to need a whole new skill set, not just to produce videos like this, but because the flipped classroom no longer has lecture, now you've got to find ways of doing problem solving, doing debates, doing small group discussion, a large group discussion. I've often said that the teacher in the 21st century is going to have to be much more of an improviser because the teacher is going to have to find ways to interact with each student at the level of the student. It's, it's a much better teacher to student ratio. We're trying to approach one to one teacher to student ratio. Um, this flipped classroom allows us to do that. I want to extend one more thought about this, and we'll talk more about this flipping in the seminar. But Bloom's taxonomy, I think, for too long has been looked at as a hierarchy, as the bottom, the blue knowledge there has to be built before you do the next. That's, that's not really accurate. Um, there are a lot of ways to think about flipping bloom, um, turning the triangle upside down. I actually like to think of it this way, that we want students to remember and understand some of the content. In order to do that, though, there's evidence now that suggests that if we work with students at these higher levels of evaluation and creation, that's a little like the rain that helps the... Um, content, the comprehension, grow. The roots are application and analysis where you have to expand and really work with the nutrients in the soil to help build that base of the pyramid. I'm not sure that this is certainly not the only way to reconfigure Bloom's, but I think Bloom's taxonomy has a lot of power but it's been misused in a lot of ways in higher education. What we're trying ultimately to do is get to learner-centered understanding of the content. The learner has to be the one that builds their own knowledge tree. And they do that through application analysis, creation, and evaluation. I don't think the creation is the end all and be all. What you're doing is creating in the student's mind this sense that they can 
completely grasp a subject in their own terms. Too often when we do a lecture model, we want the students to grasp a subject the way we think about it. And that's why this particular slide, which we'll also show in the seminar, and it's one that I, I keep reemphasizing, this teacher-centered approach is one where we try to convince the students that they need to think exactly like us. In a learner-centered approach, we're working with the student. We're working on a particular swing. We're helping the students understand how to think about cooking in their own terms and work on fingering. We work in a lot of groups because the team dynamic brings a lot of different opinions together and now there's a social construction. We're going to deal with a lot of these type of issues in our seminar, but Ultimately, what we hope is that you'll take a learner-centered approach to it and make the information your own. We want an understanding of flipping the classroom not to be the same flipped classroom that Tim and I think about, but a flipped classroom that you feel comfortable with and that you feel empowered to implement in your professional career. We're really looking forward to working with you, and I hope this introduction gave you some brief explanation about how you can use pre-class work to help set the stage for learning that will occur inside the classroom. See you soon. Mm -hmm.